Good morning. You know, I was making a fire this morning. I've made a coal fire since I was five years old. I'm pretty expert at it. But it doesn't take much um, to build a fire. But it reminded me on my shaman roots and our ancestor roots and how wise they were. And wisdom is not intelligence. It's not how to solve a starving country. Wisdom is to be here primarily as a ongoing connection with those that have been here before. We can remember our selves or our relatives or our friends and the greatness of the book they wrote or the 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 sermon they gave or the speech that lecture or that building they built or that ship they built but that intelligence will go that intelligence will fade but the intelligence of the simplistic things in life like to teach you how to survive just simply get up in the morning and enjoy life is incredible and this memory in a human way installs some kind of reconnection to what is taking place in the world right now and how we are really getting together when you ignore that conspiring media and that conspiring against media tactics what is taking place is I give you an example every moment of every day of our life we're on a boat we can call this body the boat and we're floating on the ocean and the ocean can be quite turbulent it can be quite calm but when we take our mind off of what is going on around us and we simply lie back on the boat we're not ready for the turbulence when it comes this is a the greatest time of humanity and I am privileged to be experiencing it and it's a revitalization of our old cultural primitive community ways where apparently the heating costs and the fuel costs and the food costs are all going through the roof all over the world and it's our way of recognizing through YouTube and through other closer proximities that people are addressing it they're not lying back in their boat waiting for it to pass they're standing up and looking and saying okay we need to reconnect with our primitive ways and I'm very fortunate to be a Western person but looking at Eastern culture and a shaman Western Eastern way of we see the value of our forefathers we see the value of culture we see the value of simplistic living we see the value of just concentrating on what is we are as achievable around us within our perception within our ways and not looking to the other side of the world and trying to resolve or rape or capture different cultures and countries and rights and, and civil actions and all that stuff we're now settling we're beginning to become settlers again ignoring the big corporations and all that stuff and all that 
It's not the politicians are not trying to punish us. They're trying to say, here we go. It's about to get turbulent. Are you lying back in your boat or are you upright looking at what's ahead? And are you making preparations for what is going to come? Because within this turbulence from the sight of an enlightened being sees the calm ahead. This is our human life right now. This is our way is to really see so many seven years of being on YouTube and so many people enlightening. Not personally responsible but in our whole way of coming together. Even if you go to a satsang and you don't experience that profound shift of out of body experience or, or, or light, a lightening of the mind, the ego dissolution, you are part of it. You are, we are, we are really, really seeing the shaman in each one of us. And when I make the fire, at the end of the day the fire, it goes out and it's allowed to go out. It's allowed to pass in our human mind. And I want to leave you with this now being statement. That's That first six minutes was about human life on our board. When you make the fire and you turn to go out of the house, the fire is now dead. When you leave the home, the home is now dead, meaning you've surrendered it. You've allowed it to pass because your attention is now on the car. And when you go to your work in the car and you walk into the building, you've surrendered the car. Human mind is all about surrendering and giving up. When you try to become attached to it, when you go out of the house worried about the fire, when you go into the car worried about who's going to burgle your house, when you go into the office worried about where the car is parked and will it get scratched, you're taking, you're not able to surrender, therefore you're suffering your human mind. You are the human mind suffering yourself as that what you are. Our wise ancestors, they never left home. So they didn't have that extended worries. They remained in the community. They taught themselves to self-heal. They didn't need GPs. They taught themselves how to find food. They didn't need supermarkets. They didn't need cars. They taught themselves how to love each other, teach each other, and make fires. We have extended our ability to apparently use these simple tools into an intelligent form through an intelligent ego mind that creates suffering. Unless you are able to detach when you surrender that what you have turned your back on, you will continue to destroy your body, destroy the goodness of being alive and not fully enjoy your life. That doesn't mean to say you're not detaching and surrendering every moment, but the word surrender is a sacred word it's a sacred world to the mind and it's a beautiful world to the mind and the body benefits from this mind attitude of surrender. When you take your last breath your mind will surrender to everything and it will weep at the parting of it from your body. But it won't be a distraught weep. It'll be a, I will miss you. Thank you. I acknowledge you. Weep. One moment. All of this. One sacred moment. All of this. 
And in this sacred moment, mind gave birth to itself. And God is mind. And that which surrenders to itself is a mind surrendering to God. So every time your mind turns its back on the fire, you've surrendered that fire to God. Every time you turn your back on a home, you've surrendered that home to God. It's a wonderful thing. It may be very simple and basic, but it's a colossal, absolute gratitude from a God that is a mind-based God. But all of this life, when there's no names to the fire, there's no names to the house, no names to the car, no names to the, the job, no names to you, is one whole surrendering. If surrendering is taking place on its own, because there's nothing really to surrender. You're not surrendering the names, you're not surrendering what took place, you're just moving on your board. There's no action to take on your board. There's no planning and preparation to take on your board. There's no lying back on your board. There is a simple you as the mast, witnessing and watching the turbulence, witnessing and watching the calm, witnessing and watching the beauty that surrounds you, witnessing and watching, knowing that you're never separate from the ocean. Witnessing and watching, witnessing and watching, with no attachments, associations, no worries, no fears, no concerns. <sighs> always here, always now. When I make the fire, I have a mind to remind me that one day I will end up in that fire. To the being state, the fire is never lit. The fire will never go out. Because that what makes the fire is beyond the fire. Beyond the body, beyond the mind and beyond the fire is myself. When the boat disappears, the ocean remains. Into the pot of love. One moment here, one moment gone for the body. One moment here, one moment gone for the mind. One moment here, one moment never gone for the truth for that sacred space between the one and the moment is I it's a beautiful time to be alive so many enlightened beings in YouTube popping up every now and then incredible talking about making your own foods like the shaman, talking about creating your heat like the shaman, talking about self-healing like the shaman, talking about gathering your family together and not moving out of your place of life, the place that you chose to be with the family you chose to be with. Use the moment wisely, be sacred, be grateful for your predecessors. Be grateful for primitive life, simple, basic life. Be grateful for wisdom. Because as the wise, you'll see your eternal flame that never goes out. deep honor for all who witness these videos I'm in deep honor for my predecessors I'm in deep honor for those who will come through this body through a birth of 
children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren. I am in deep honour of God that is beyond. Christ says, I am a son of God. Christ never said, I am the son of God. Could it be that we are all a son of God? Or a daughter? If you believe in man and woman being separate. One sacred moment. When you surrender the mind to the sacred moment, the mind and the sacred moment are in joy. You experience as Rumi did, an apparent beginning and you never stop dancing, never stop giving up this love to God. You enjoy your life, enjoy your mind, enjoy surrendering, don't attach, let everything go. That's my final words. Just let go. You won't end up not being anywhere. You'll end up being everywhere as everything in that beautiful, okay state in presence that is here and now. God bless humanity. God bless you. God bless life. God bless me. As that that I am. <laughs> All is Buddha. In the words of Papaji, Papaji says on his deathbed, find Buddha. When you find Buddha, you don't find a particular man, a particular saint. You find pure, infinite love. There's nothing else to seek, nothing else to know, nothing else to experience. Because that pot is the ocean that we pop out of every now and then bob around and then when the bubble pops the pop she goes into the ocean of eternal life namaste